Very pleased to welcome David Hawley to the news hour. He is Director General of the International School of Geneva, which is one of the world's oldest international schools. Well, let's talk about it. You've got to balance what your government says anywhere, uh, what a school believes and what a school is capable of doing, and then what the parents and the students want as well. It's a terrific question. So, and, and in fact, you, you asked it in a way that captured the, the tensions and the conflicts among the various groups, whether it be uh, parents, students, staff, uh, government, etc. We've created a what if document so that if something happens, uh, these these are the these are the consequences, etc. So you're so trying we, to we've, we've sorry, I'm going to interrupt you there. You're you're, you're uh, it's this difficult position of trying to please everyone, and and when you try to please everyone, you can unfortunately end up pleasing no one if you're not careful. Isn't it, and maybe I'm saying this from the perspective of someone who has a child in school, isn't it the parent and the child who should have the ultimate decision here about whether they feel safe about sending children back to school or not, and the ultimate decision lies with them? That is not the case in Switzerland, um, meaning students, uh, unless there is a, a reason for them not to be here, students are required to be in school. And so we set, uh, we're following those guidelines, the standards set by the government. And I think the critical thing is that um, we are clear about the standard we are following, because mm -hmm. you mentioned one. One standard could be we just leave it up to the parents mm -hmm. to make a decision. The other one is we um, leave it up to um, other organizations like the World Health Organization, or we leave it up to other countries or other mm -hmm. organizations. But we have chosen to declare that we are following the guidelines of the federal government and the the cantonal governments uh, in our schools. And, uh, you know, we have to have some faith and confidence in, a, you know, a single source of truth, even though everything is very unpredictable. For kids in schools, especially younger children, having to wear masks, having to social distance, that is tough stuff for little people to deal with. It becomes tough for the teachers to police as well. So we're following a standard, trying not to panic, and giving the students the tools to take care of themselves. Right. So obviously hand washing, wearing masks when they, at, at, after a certain age, in the case of Switzerland, so our students are not, not all our students are obligated to wear masks, except for students who are over 16 years old are wearing masks. Right, and, that's, are... and that is a really interesting point. That was gonna lead into my final question. The science, the idea, the theory out there that children are not as badly affected uh, by COVID-19 as grown-ups are. Again, why take the risk? Why not just decide, hey, everyone's got a chance here, and that would minimize the chance of, of, uh, of transfer? Well, again, we, we cannot reduce the risk to absolute zero. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, the data, the data here uh, in Switzerland, the data and the experience of our schools are such that we are poised and ready to change our approach when the environmental and public health situations change. Mm. So we don't want to change prematurely and have, unfortunately, which is often happens when you talk about this, the tensions in the world, mm. someone will read something about another country, and they will then demand that we apply that here when our reality is dramatically different. Mm. So again, we're trying yeah. to be as predictable as we possibly can. Um, but the there's, no, uh, is, there's no one size uh, fits all thing in the end, uh, is there? No, no, no Do but we're being clear about our standard. And I'm also, as an educator, hopeful that this behavior is going to be long-term protective, mm. meaning the, the people, students, and you know, I, I saw a lot of students visit all of our campuses, they're generally managing quite well wearing okay. a mask. They don't love it, but they're getting on with it. And I think it's actually going to help long term with public health, mm -hmm. because in the winter, when we have flus, it's now going to be socially acceptable right. to wear a mask. Yeah.